Welcome back. Wow, this next conversation. We have so many themes and topics to get to. First off, art in Utah. It's an interesting consideration as one of the more conservative states. Here in the continental US, certainly we don't always get to see some of the more challenging theatrical material, but the Utah Repertory Theater is gradually making some changes, and their current production is definitely one that is making some changes without a doubt. I'm very excited to be here with two of the three actors in Straight, a story about what happens when you meet someone who changes many of the underpinnings of what you might think about your life. I'm here with Dallin Thorpe and John Valdez. Welcome, fellas. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I got to tell folks that I went and saw the show Thursday, last Friday night, and and I kept yeah, next, reminding next myself Thursday, the twenty second. We're going to be on Salt Lake. We're so. we're not off Broadway. Um, we're yeah, in yeah. Utah, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. challenging. We have I, I don't know. I guess I, it's a real, it's real, it's real subject like matter. Whether or not it's challenging, yeah, I suppose, is more the context of the so of need, the viewer. Yeah, but. For the two of you, first of all, thank you for coming. Great yeah, to see you guys. Yes. Wonderful Thursday performances. Thank you. And thank you. talk about the talk Hi, about the show and talk about your involvement in it, your excitement, your trepidations about doing some challenging material. And for folks at home, sure. your character John is is in a relationship right. and meets Chris. Right. Played Dallin's Dallin, character yes. and <laughs> the plot thickens. Yeah, so, so the play is called Straight. It's written by Scott Elmgreen and Drew Fornarola, who are two playwrights from New York. And um, they wrote it in 2016. Well, it premiered That's in Off-Broadway yeah. in 2016. Yeah, so, um, so we're the, one of the first regional premieres. And, um, and it's, it's been really good. It's a story about uh, this guy named Ben, who's 26 year old. He's an investment banker who lives in Boston. And he's dating this girl named Emily, uh, played by <coughs> Andrea, um, <coughs> and who's <laughs> great. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, he he's dating this girl, and then he meets this guy, and it kind of shakes things up. It shakes things up about how he views himself and what he wants out of life, and um, and he has to make a bunch of decisions um, about about kind of who he is and where he's going and, and what he wants. And, um, and yeah, why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about Chris? Oh, Chris. Chris is fun. Chris is, basically, if you could time travel back to 2000 whatever it is and meet 20-year-old Dallin, you'd get the same. Similar. Same, same <laughs> kind of, same idea, same kind of person. Although Chris is a lot smarter than I was back then, even though he's not that smart. He's kind of smart. Um, you know, the thing that kind of got me really interested in the show was first time I read it, um, it took me back a little because the relationship that Chris deals with with Ben and Emily without giving anything away was pretty much exactly a relationship I dealt with at that same age with somebody who right. had a girlfriend and kind of things transpired and I thought things were going to happen how they happened and here Dallin sits. 29 years old. <laughs> yeah, didn't happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's fun. It's interesting to see a take on it in a very liberal setting such as Boston and performing it here in Utah because you have all these themes that people, especially in Utah, are used to of just how someone deals with labels and not wanting to be labeled and how society and culture views them and how they don't want to be viewed a certain way and it just it hits so close to home to everybody I just kind of think it doesn't matter what setting you do this show in it's gonna trigger people it's gonna strike a nerve and it's gonna resonate with a large audience um, I kind of feel like there's not one character in the show specifically someone's gonna latch on to. Like, there's three very different stories. There's three very, Emily's got a very different, distinct story. Ben definitely has a different story. Chris definitely has a very different story. And it kind of just plays out through the whole show to the point where there's not one solid ending. There's three endings, and you kind of right. have to there's decide kind of an ending which one, for each yeah, character. You right? kind of have to decide which one resonates more with you, and it's intense and it's fun, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Certainly, with with 
uh, and I, I, I use sports analogies, three, three, three players on the court and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's just the three of you yeah. Yeah. and a huge challenge as a performer, I'm sure. Of course, there's the, the, just the process of memorizing your lines in the most basic sense. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's, a, it's a very dialogue rich, I mean, the references, the cultural references, everything is fantastic. I mean, it, it really is coming rapid fire. Talk a little bit about the process, and I'm sure that both of you have had roles that have been challenging in terms of preparation and, and, and a lot of horsepower while the show is on. How does this show compare, and especially because the two of you are sharing very intense scenes where both of you, again, not to give too much away, but yeah. both of you are having a challenge right. with your own identity and then yeah. trying to be young and, and figuring that out yeah. in, in the process yeah. of emotion being involved. Yeah. You want to go first? Sure. So, um, <laughs> so I uh, <clears throat> had a really good time rehearsing the show. First off, I want to say everyone was very, very strong. Everyone came with their A game. Um, our director, JC Carter, had a very clear vision of what he wanted um, and was able to kind of push us in the right direction. And then oh, both of my castmates came prepared and ready to work and ready to, ready to really dig in, which always makes it easier. It's always much easier if everyone is prepared and willing to do the work yeah. before the time comes. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, comparing it to other roles, I mean, it's set in like you know modern day Boston, so it's not there's not a lot of like cultural or historical work that needs to be done, but also it's very emotionally um, charged. Yeah. So you have yeah. to be just ready to be there and be in it and and really um, <clears throat> feel what the characters are feeling in order to you know go through it on stage and give the audience that that opportunity um, to really feel it with you which can be difficult on any given day. <laughs> yeah, so. no question about it. Yeah. Well, and one thing that um, you said the other day, so one thing that makes this, I think, a lot easier on us, especially, because I, I honestly don't know if I could do this with another cast. And I mean, of you course I'm, do it with no, of cast. course I'm gonna say that though, <laughs> but it's because of how we've kind of come together and how it went about. I mean, the amount of trust with what we have to do for each other it's just so much more raised than any other. I mean, I've done typical Utah shows, like I've done Seussical, I've done Seven Brides, I've done those shows. I've not really had to do anything where you've had to be vulnerable in every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. It's like you're vulnerable from anything you can think of. You're vulnerable and yeah, it's, if, uh, yeah. Physically, yeah, yeah. The hardest thing for me, like a lot of people ask me, well, what's it like doing this on stage or this? It's like, no, you know the hardest thing is actually getting angry like letting that all of those walls break is the hardest thing and actually having John to do that with has helped a lot because I I trust him and it's a great environment and even my one scene I have with Andrea it's not much we don't have a lot of time together right. but the time we have is so crucial to the show mm -hmm. and just being able to work what we've worked together and do everything with her just those connections we've formed in rehearsal and even now that we've opened it's just really intensified the show and the experience just in something I can't compare to anything I've done it's just on a whole other level and I've worked with JC on a couple other projects and this is just by far the best one I've worked with him on just in every aspect I, I would imagine that as performers there's something about this kind of work where there's not too many places to, to look for help, so to speak, on stage when, yeah. right, there's, there's barely really one scene where all three actors right. are, are present on stage and mostly mm -hmm. it's, it's in twos. Right. <laughs> it, you mentioned that there was a, a, a little bit of time during rehearsals and preparation when you felt overwhelmed and I have to say yeah. that I, I kind of identified with that just as a viewer of course reminding myself that we're in Utah we're not you know this yeah. wouldn't be such a big deal in Chicago or Boston or New York or someplace like that but by the same token it is a big deal on its own when yeah. you shut out the outside of where are we and what's happening in the rest of the world and go into this place this crucible 
where especially your two characters, and especially Ben, the character of Ben, is how does the guy sleep? He's in a really heavy <laughs> right. point in yeah. his life, yeah. not just because he's having what it certainly the script portends it could be a serious relationship, but it's like, oh, by the way, there's a prior existing serious relationship right. yeah. with a woman. Yes. Really heavy. Were, were there times for you, John, when, when the, the preparation and, and especially rehearsal doing scenes and being like, well, I, I need a break from the intensity of this? Um, I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily say I needed a break, per se. There were definitely nights when I was exhausted. There, there were a couple times we both, though, I probably needed a break more than anybody because I just got in my head. But there were definitely times where we'd both look at each other and be like, oh, well, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That happened. Yeah. Yeah. This is heavy. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, when I first, when I first read the script, um, I really didn't like Ben as a character because he is a deeply flawed human being. Um, <clears throat> but, and not only that, I mean, everyone is flawed, but he allows his flaws to like affect other people in very impactfully negative ways. Um, and I think uh, I, I, I couldn't really understand why he was making the choices he was making. Um, so it, it took a lot of you know personal um, like thinking and investing in order to figure out like how he ticks. Mm -hmm. um, which which definitely helped during the rehearsal process. But I mean, and you said that it's not, um, it's a bigger deal here in Utah than it would be elsewhere. But I think that the tones and the themes of the show resonate regardless of where you are. I mean, there's there are productions, um, there's a production right now that's rehearsing in Mexico and also in Israel. Germany. And Germany. Germany, there is one that's going to be happening in Israel too. Yeah, yeah. But I wow. think the Germany and Mexico ones are the ones that are happening right, right now. now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, so even even when you're not talking about, you know, Boston, America, these these kind of um, themes about human morality and human sexuality and 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 choosing a life partner, you know, they yeah. kind of transcend the, the cultural nuances of wherever you're at. So, well said. Let's talk a little bit about what's coming up because you guys had opening weekend last weekend. You're gonna yes. you're gonna take this journey a few more times. Yep, yep we are. Yeah, five more times. Yeah, well, we've got five more fun-filled times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to say it. We've got performances this coming Friday and Saturday, and then the following Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And Utah rep. Yeah. At the Sorensen Unity Center, that's yes, correct. and that's Ninth uh, West, and about uh, thirteen hundred south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get tickets at utahrep.org. Nicely done. Yep. Well played, <laughs> fellas. Thank you so much for the work that it takes to do this. I know that we, I mean, we all have lives and other stuff that we do, and I have just enough experience in theater to know what an amazing amount of, hmm. of work you all have put in to what's really a beautiful piece. It's, it is, it's got its rough moments, but, hmm. but there's something, uh, I, and I think it really goes to the two of you as actors. I, I found something really redeeming, and Ben as well, uh, by your portrayals, and I, I really want to encourage people to, to go and see this show, because I think th there isn't enough opportunity to, to sit back and, and ponder serious, heavier questions, yeah. maybe in, in theater here, but in so many ways, that's what theater is about. Yeah. And, yep. and you all have done a wonderful job, and I hope that you will carry all of our congratulations to everyone in the, in the crew uh, and the yeah, cast, we'll since uh, two-thirds of Thank the cast you. is yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a, a really neat show to see. I felt, I felt like I learned something, and it was the very best of, of what theater's about. So awesome. we wish you more <laughs> great shows, break legs, Thank you. and thank you very uh, much. best wishes for continued <laughs> success in the theater. So nice to meet both of you thank guys you, down. Thank you, me too. John, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. And we will see you guys, I'm sure, in future yes. 
Utah Rep shows as well. Awesome. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> UtahRep.org. Get tickets. The play is straight. It's an interesting treatise and one that I definitely feel better for having watched in an intellectual and an entertainment sense. We're going to take a break, a quick interlude for a St. Patty's cocktail and then my pals Lonzo and Carlton are here. They are making a documentary about the African American experience in Utah called Two Percent right after this.